Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the Ramadan special. Inshallah, your Ramadan is going very well and you're enjoying it and you're taking and reaping the benefits and the advantages of this holy month, inshallah. Now, let us kick off with myself, Mohsin Shah, and Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Salaamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Sheikhna, mashallah, we've had a lot of discussions in regards to uh, fasting and Ramadan. Um, let us move on to a very, very important topic, which is. What invalidates the fast? As in when we are in the position and under the, the status of fasting, when we are fasting, what are we not allowed to do that would actually make our fast batal? Inshallah. A'udhu billah as-sami'a al-alim, min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa alihi al-muhammad. There are ten invalidators of the fasting that makes um, the fast and the siyam batil if the one commits uh, one of the one of these acts of mubtilat i'll mention the 10 and then i'll go through each one by one inshallah in detail um, the first mubtil that invalidates the fasting is eating okay. the first uh, criteria is eating the one who eats, um, of course, that will break his fast, and of course, there are consequences, kafar and so forth, which comes afterwards. Number two is drinking, drinking water, drinking juice, anything else. Also, uh, that breaks um, and makes the uh, fasting invalid and void. Number three is marital relationship, which is also one of the muftirat, so there's physical contact between the male and the female, and that takes place, the intercourse, then that makes the process itself makes the one, um, the both parties, the uh, batal. Number four is the masturbation, again this act which is by itself is haram, mm -hmm. an act of sin and forbidden, but also um, makes the, uh, the fasting batil and void. Um, number five is ascribing lies to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu and to his pure family Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam So if somebody says something and he ascribes to the Prophet sallallahu as a lie then his siyam, his fasting will be void and batil. Um, number six is when allowing and letting the thick dust or even steam uh, to reach the one's throat. That also makes the fasting bottle and void. Um, number seven, immersing one's head in the water. So the full head, the entire head, if it's immersed inside the water, that makes the fasting of that individual uh, void and bottle. Um, number eight is remaining in the, in the state and the case of Janabah until the Fajr and Adhan time, Adhan al-Subh. Again, deliberately, you stay in this situation and you don't do the ghusl, the fasting of that day will be batil. Number nine is the enema, which is defined as um, injecting the ones with the liquid um, inside the lower bowel of, of the human being. So that actually, the process of such injections will make the fasting void and battle as well. Uh, number 10 is vomiting. Again, if somebody uh, with purpose vomits, then his fast will be battle and void. So he has to do the qada of that day again. So these are the 10 main invalidators and mubtalat of fasting and psalm, Ahsan. which we have to make sure that we know it and we try to avoid it during the daytime of the month of Ramadan. Now these are not allowed when the one is fasting. Of course, some of them is haram, like masturbation, but in overall, um, for the one to keep his fasting uh, 
safe and secured, he must avoid committing these 10 mubtalat and invalidators of the siyam and fasting. Let me begin with the first and the second uh, mubtalat of, of fasting, eating and drinking. Now, with regard to the eating and drinking, if the one fasting individual eats and drinks normal food and drink. Deliberately. Deliberately, of course, yeah, with purpose. Um, he drinks water, juices, and so forth. Or he eats, for example, uh, bread or rice, meat, chicken, and so forth. Deliberately, then his fast will be invalidated and bottled. Now, with regard to eating and drinking, that also covers the abnormal food and drink. You know, if somebody, let's say, he eats soil, okay, or tree leaves, for example, or even wood, anything, paper, paper, for example, that also uh, invalidates the fasting and and siyam. And likewise for the drink, if somebody drinks, for example, petrol, even a drop, let's say, or uh, perfume, or anything else which is abnormal drink, that also will uh, break his fast. So the rule is anything goes inside uh, the mouth, be it a normal drink and, and eating, or abnormal, that will break his fast. Asan Shaykhna. Um, what about, I mean, how, how much is the amount that uh, makes this, uh, the psalm bottle? Yani if I took a very, very little amount, does that, is that sufficient to make the fast void? As in, let's say I was having a shower uh, or I was brushing my teeth and uh, there was a little, just a bit of, of, like a drop or two drops of water in my mouth and I thought rather than spitting it out, I'll just swallow it. It's okay, it's not a problem. Um, is, is that okay or would that make my fast invalid? Well, regardless of the, whether the intake of the amount is very small or very large. Let's say you eat a big sandwich of, let's say, cheese or chicken or anything else, or just a small piece of bread, or one drop of water even. If that goes inside the mouth and, and reaching the throat, then that will make the fasting and the siyam batil and void. And you have to do the qaba. If deliberately, then you have to do the kafara as well. Oh, we'll wow. come to this case, inshallah, later on. So, important that we make sure that there's nothing goes inside our throat. Uh, any food or drink, even a drop, even a bit. That's very important. Sheikhna, you keep saying that if it was done deliberately, which, fine, I can understand that. But what if it was an accident? What if I forgot that um, I, I was fasting and I ate something? I took a bite of an apple and I thought, oh, no, I'm fasting and I, 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 I spit it out. But I've already swallowed a couple of bites. Or if I'm walking and there's wind and there was a bit of dust, a thick bit of dust went into my mouth and I was just panicking, oh, and I accidentally swallowed it. Uh, does that make my fasting void? Well, the rule here changes. Uh, any unintentional eat or drink, um, an accidental eating or drinking will not void the fast. Okay. So even let's say if somebody comes, he wakes up in the morning, and he goes to his chore and he eats, let's say, breakfast. He just forgot about uh, the fasting. fasting. It's the first day of Ramadan. It happens to some, be some people. Uh, they go to the routine. They yes. start to have a you know, cup of coffee, for example. Toast, or something, yeah. toast, egg, cheese, butter, and so forth. And then afterwards, they realize, oh, we are fasting. It's the month of Ramadan. Yes. That will be accepted as a fasting as well. So they have okay. to refrain from eating and drinking straight away. Uh, and that will be accepted, that's fine. It okay. won't avoid the, the Sorry, am I, am I correct in thinking that until you realize that you're fasting, whatever's gone past is okay, you can carry exactly. on? Exactly. Because you didn't do it on purpose. If I'm chewing, it's in my mouth, and I remember that, oh, I'm fasting, what should I do then? Should I spit the food out? Exactly, you have to throw it away straight away. Okay. You shouldn't keep anything inside when you become aware of the situation. Because mm -hmm. if you just ignore it and you swallow, swallow it, then that becomes an intentional and deliberate breaking fast which has qada and kafara as well. So you have to be careful. You throw away straight away. 
Thank you very much, Sheikhna. Uh, Sheikhna, a question, I mean, uh, it's quite personal. Yeah, it's something sometimes I suffer from, and I'm sure a lot of the viewers also suffer from, is that in the morning when we eat suhoor, sometimes we have leftovers stuck between our teeth, um, and you know, we're there fidgeting, trying to remove it all, just in time before the Fajr Adhan. Um, according to Sayyid Sadiq, may Allah lengthen his life, um, are we actually allowed to swallow this? Because sometimes it happens unintentionally in our saliva. We're just normally swallowing our saliva and then we might feel some a bit, a bit of the crumbs or a bit, a bit of the leftover food go down our throat. Does this make our fast button or not? Well, as I've said with regard to f the f food and drink, if they were eaten intentionally, they will make and render uh, the fasting void and bottle. The same applies here. If somebody um, swallows uh, a bit of food, which were between his teeth, for example, during the day of, of the month of Ramadan in daylight, uh, on purpose, uh, intentionally, that will also make this uh, fasting bottle and void. So we have to be careful that we brush our teeth, maybe use the floss um, in the Sahar time, for example, so we won't be in such situation and um, if unintentionally that happened, then that's fine. Again, as I've said, if somebody eats unintentionally, then they've realized afterwards that's fine. So that's when I'm swallowing my saliva and I feel a bit of food go down, I think, oh, oh that's God, fine. I didn't know that was there. That's okay. That's, that's fine. That doesn't make Unintentional mind. swallowing is fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ascent. Thank you very much, Sheikh. Sheikh, another one. Um, I was talking about swallowing saliva. But sometimes when we have a flu, we have uh, mucus stuck in our sinuses and stuff like that. Are we allowed to swallow that, the mucus, if you've got a bad throat or there's some sort of blockage in our, our um, sinus? Well, you have two different things. Number one, the saliva uh, that accumulates in the mouth. To swallow that, that's fine. The saliva is fine, uh, which is called in Arabic riq. Uh, okay. You can swallow that, that's fine. However, with regard to the mucus which comes from the head and the chest, if it reaches the area of the mouth and tongue, you're not allowed to uh, swallow it. And um, you have to throw it away from the mouth. And as the Sayyid says, it is mandatory as a precaution, wajib ihtiyati, that you should not swallow the mucus. You must remove it from your mouth. If it's just from, um, let's say, from the head goes uh, inside your throat, but it's not from the mouth, that's fine. You know, sometimes you can pull down and, you know, the, the, the yeah. mucus from uh, the head towards your um, throat and so such, su such like. But if it reaches the area of the mouth, it is where you have to avoid it okay. and throw it away. That's the rule. Ahsan, thank you very much, Sheikh And thank you to all the viewers that have been joining us for Iqam SOS. Inshallah, your fast is going well. See us next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.